Hey guys, Daniel James here, and uh, what we're going to do today is be taking a look at Sample Logic's uh, new sample library, Rumble. Uh, and the way I'll do this is like with my other videos, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a look at a short little queue I've written, which is back here, and uh, then I'll talk about the bits I used of the library to put it together, the bits I didn't use, and then uh, just a brief overview of what the library's got and what it does and all that good stuff. So uh, let's, let's take a listen to the short little queue I've written. Here we go. So that's a short little cure. And as you can tell, I went for a very heavily distorted, uh, in your face kind of bank heist type of track. It's hard to explain what that kind of track is, but yeah, the best thing I could describe is like, it's like a, a gritty modern uh, bank heist film. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's, let's talk about what this library is about. So Rumble Sample Logic's new thing, new thing, it's their new library. And, uh, the premise of it is everything's based around uh, all the sounds and all the sound design is based around um, the Blue Devils. I think it's called the Blue Devils, the Blue Devils marching band. So all the sounds are very um, percussive in their in their timbre or timber or tim timber timbre whatever. Yeah, so the, the, yeah, it's very uh, percussive in it, its timbre tom in its sound. Um, and yeah, and it uses sample logic, you know, they're very, uh, you know, they're very good use of effects and front panel and stuff. So uh, let's take a look at the, the actual track I wrote. So I, I used uh, 13 different sounds uh, to build this track. And so let's start from the beginning. So the first thing I've, I've got going on is uh, is this sound. I have this, uh, this build up section here. And we start off, we've got this low kind of distorted but subby kick sound and I've layered it with uh, this with this one loop which is on channel 2 which is basic uh, and what I've got going on is I've got a, uh, a filter as you can see here this this line is controlling a filter so it, it opens to uh, give this feeling of rising so this is the about to blow start it from the beginning as you can see the filter There's, there's your basic, and I think I layered this with, what track is this on? Track six. On track six, I layered it with a kind of hi hatty type sound. Actually, more of a stick sound. Which I could have open. I put a very pregnant pause right here. Uh, to, to really uh, accent this first beat. But anyway, so uh, moving into the actual main section, which is this very distorted kind of... Uh, just this big kind of sound designy thing going on. Let's take a look at a few of the sounds. So first off, I've got this sound. Which sounds a bit shit by itself, but that's because of the way I programmed it. By itself, it doesn't make much sense. But... Um, that line there is actually using the uh, the ensemble marching band, the traditional sound, which I'll show you in a minute. But I've laid it with uh, with this sound here. If, if I layer that together, that that pattern makes a lot more sense. So 
so it's basically adding the percussive edge to that sound so let's take a look at what that sound is so channel four channel four so on channel four i have uh, the grease fire and what i've done here is uh, as you can see anything with a light next to it means that there is uh, an effect attached to it so as you can see i've got distortion filter eq and delay and also this one down here which uh which if you've ever seen my uh, cinematic guitar videos is one of my favorite things about the uh, sample logic's new uh, libraries is is they've got a built-in sequencer on the volume and what i've done is i've actually used this to create uh, to make this patch sound more rhythmic than it already was so if i play it again that sound for now i'll turn this off I've also got the same thing on pan. So if I turn that off. Which is already a very rhythmic phrase. But uh, I decided to uh, put a, a step sequence on it. But I, I, what I did is I changed it so it was only two steps. So I could basically have an on and an off. Which creates a gating effect. And then I, I set the speed to fast. So then you turn that on. So then becomes... Which is a lot more rhythmic, and then you throw on top of that a pan, which was already set on the patch, but I just turned it off, which goes left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. You turn that on, you get an even more rhythmic patch. You throw on top of that, you know, you've got your delays, which are doing eighths. And there you've got that's that's the basic rhythmic pulse of the entire cue, and so I, I took I took a great deal of attention to make that as rhythmic as as physically possible. So let's move on to this uh, next section. This is this is probably the bit you hear most predominantly. This is a very distorted, overblown type sound. Again, this is using. Uh, one of the built-in loops, so we just take a look at that number five. I'll get to I'll get to what all the loops and stuff are in a minute. I'm just showing you how I built the queue. So this is using the uh, assassination uh, plot one mod wheel loop, and then uh, as you can see, it's got EQ, compressor, filter, distortion, delay. And those of you who've seen my cinematic guitar video, you'd know what the old um, sample logic interface looks like. And as you can see here, this loop section is actually very different to the uh, the old one. What you can actually do here is you can, uh, as you can see, each each uh, transient is sliced uh, in in rhythm. And if you turn on the the volume, say, you can actually uh, set like like a step sequence. You can set a kind of pattern on the transients themselves. So when I play this back, it should. As you can see, it's now following this pan. You can also do the same with pan. Just click on that. So that goes uh, left, center, right, center, left, center, right, center. You can also do with pitch, which uh, which is quite cool. So you can actually create like um, kind of tonal things. It's kind of hard to uh, to control what the pitch is, but I mean, if you're going for a very atonal or non-tonal kind of thing as you can see you can create a com completely different sound just using this uh, this little d or of course you know if you didn't want to um, get as involved as, as that you can just come over here and do the volume like this you know you know you can use it as a step sequencer like a traditional kind of of course you can randomize that which can throw up some really interesting results so now the same with pan but uh, for this I wanted I wanted the actual sound to be I wanted the sound to be right down the middle and really strong so it really uh, drives the pulse of the track so you get that I mean, if I turn these off, you'll hear what it sounds like. And then back. 
back on. Different sound. So the low fi we got. I didn't. I did initially have low fi on this, but I thought it took away some of that really in your faceness. Of course, that that um, rhythm was designed to go hand in hand with uh, the previous rhythm, which is this. So yeah, that's that little section there. So come down here, see what we got going on here. So number nine. Now that may have sounded a little bit weird, but uh, the intent of this is basically what I've done is I've taken the uh, traditional in the traditional section. I've taken the symbols patch, which has got hi hats and you know your symbols and crashes and all this. And what I've done is I've actually put um, a bit of lo-fi on it give it a kind of shuffly sound it's hard to explain and then i've i've played them kind of soft and let's just back out of here a bit and i've taken a bit of high off the top using the uh using the filter here so basically what you end up with is almost like a shaker and it, it sounds a little bit um a little bit weak but when you put it in the mix it's got it adds a kind of airness airness is that a word i think so Anyway, it adds a certain airness. Okay. I take it away, it kind of loses that little something. Kind of that sound that you can't get otherwise. So let's move down here and take a listen to this sound. This is like your typical high-end um, hi-hat or stick or something, just to add uh, the rhythmic interest on top of all that distortion. This one here is called the slipping in, which again uses the uh, the loop section. I mean, if I click randomize, you can see it. See what we can turn this into. So let's just turn all these on, and then click randomize, 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 and okay, and let's see what that happens. So it's created a completely random uh, loop out of just using these things. If I turn the pitch off, so it's a bit more. Just, just for reference, this is what it sounds like originally. Turn the lo-fi on. Bit of distortion. See, it's turning things on and off here. It's a very, very nice tool. This uh, very powerful if you're if you're into using all the effects. Although now I fear that I can't, even though I've turned it off here, it, it's staying on. I want it. Maybe I have to turn it off. Turn them off here and here. Is that going to work? There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so uh, we're back to it. So as you can hear, that's just uh, adding the little clicks on top. So we move down here. We've got, uh, I've already looked at that one. Let's move down here. And we've got this little section here, which just sounds like this. And this is one of the, uh, the kits. So it's got like uh, a little kit section here. The gist of this is it actually has uh, each key. Let me just play it. Each key has its own sound. And then what I've done is I've uh, I've used you know a few different sounds to layer underneath the rhythms, the rhythms to make them uh, a bit more accentuated. Put it with this one. As you see there, that's a cool little trick. These little audio files here, what I did is I took impacts. And, uh, I, I basically, I, I bounced them to audio so that I could, uh, this is more of a personal thing that I always do. And then uh, I reversed it so I could use it as a, so I could use it as a swell. So yeah, so let's move into this middle section. Uh, these little bits here, going on here. Oh no, this is the same, uh, this is the same click from the beginning 
Uh, the hi-hats are now doing a more shuffly thing. As you can see, they've got a filter. And we move down here. We've actually got a new instrument, which is uh, on number 11. And what I've done is I've taken a, a bass instrument, which is in the melodic, I think. Kush bass? Yeah, I took one of the melodic instruments. Uh, initially, it had the arpeggiator on it, which looks like this. Yeah, which is your typical arpeggio. So if you were to hold, um, you know, hold a, hold a few notes, you get a, uh, an arpeggiated rhythm, which, which I didn't particularly want for this because I wanted to program my own little bass. So I just switched it off with the light, and then played a more rhythmic passage. So less melodic, more rhythmic. And as you can hear, it's got more notes than what's actually displayed there. That's because I've also got on some delay which is up here if i turn that off this was basically just to have a different section a different b section so it's got it sounds similar but different from the first section and here is uh, using the kit which we talked about here i've uh, by itself sounds rather on it you know it doesn't sound right by itself but when you layer it with the bass you can hear that it's it's doubling and it adds to the rhythm yeah and then we basically uh, do a few variations on the elements that come before and then to the outro so that's how i put together the little cue um, I just showed you a few of the things. So let's take a look at what the library contains. So uh, it comes in two sections. You've got morphed and traditional. Uh, morphed, if, if you know anything of sample logic, morphed is, you know, the, the thing you're uh, going to be used to. This is their, 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 their kind of signature sound, you know, the, the sound design from a, you know, a nice sound design thing. So it's, it comes, the morph section's got um, arpeggi uh, arpeggiated part. Arp bloody hell. Arpeggiated patches. Uh, atmospheres, impacts, kits, loops, melodic, and transitions. And then the arpeggiated's got some melodic. So the arpeggiated stuff's like this. Let's take a look. Sounds like that. So you've got some nice uh, melodic y stuff. stuff and then we got some uh, percussive stuff which which are all cool one one thing i will warn you is when you've got a lot of effects on and a lot of patches it does um, impact the cpu quite a lot i mean if i look at this middle section here you take a look at the cpu <laughs> bad example it stayed at 10 percent <laughs> he's having a bit of a bit of a it's not a drastic hit but uh you know the more effects you get obviously the more cpu you use so keep an eye on how, ma how many of these uh, you use and obviously it's got uh, if it's got MW, it means it's got a mod wheel control. So if we, which has a kind of filter to it. And this one here says machine X play clusters. So that is what we shall do. You've got some nice uh, percussive sounds. Let's just drag a few more of these in. Again, mod wheel controlled. Which is cool. So let's uh, move back. So that's the arpeggiated section. Uh, and ar arpeggi uh, an arpeggiated patch normally means that it'll play a rhythm when you hold a key. 
But if you play more than one key, it'll all turn up between them. And the arpe just just in case uh, any of you are wondering, the arpe <coughs> excuse me, the arpeggiated uh, section is down here, which you can find just by clicking on this. So as you can see, it's doing that rhythm. So if I wanted, I could bring this down to two steps, have one full on, one full off. You know, drag it up to 64. That's it. Didn't like that too much, but so you can create a nice uh, rhythmic patch, which is cool. So let's uh, move on. So we've got some atmospheres, which uh, you could probably guess what these would be like. So you, know, you, you, you hold a patch and you get an atmosphere kind of thing. One thing, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is you get uh, in the arpeggio, arpeggiated section. I think it's limited to the arpeggiated section. So uh, I'll talk about both of these now. So, uh, like we talked about with the sequencer, you've got the, uh, which is here, the volume uh, sequencer. Is it the same for everything? Let's check this. I need to check this. Yeah, so it appears as though it's just the volume section. It's also got an LFO section. So the step sequence, if I just turn this to an on off, you know, it creates a sound like this. But if you click this here, you now move to a, 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 an LFO, which is more of a fade in, fade out vibe. So if we could turn the speed. And you can change these to uh, Know, different shapes so we could have a square which is on off you can also change this to uh, random so it just does whatever whatever the hell it wants and you can have uh, more than one LFO going on but I normally stick to set step sequences because I like the very hard edgeness of it uh, but also on the arpeggio arpeggiator sorry what you get is you get a let's take a look a sustain pedal control with a, an articulator so basically means if I, if I click that and then hold the sustain pedal it does its job I mean it's, it's bad to do it on the uh, atmospheres because it's hard to tell what's going on but if I just pick one of the percussive things the arpeggiator and turn on to the articulator so as you can see these are the uh, artic these are the accents it's doing and if I put on the sustain pedal control when I play it it actually ignores this completely until I hold the sustain pedal which I'm doing now and off and on And again, I can turn this down to uh, like two steps and on off, and then put my foot down on the pedal. So if you wanted to perhaps, you know, have something with a bit more live control, you know, you can whack on the uh, the old sustain pedal thing there. So uh, let's move, let's get back to where we were. So atmospheres, which is your, uh, like we mentioned, it's your kind of, it's an atmosphere. We all know what that is. Uh, impacts. So you get distorted electronic, low end, metallic, thunderous, tonal. And these are, as you would imagine, are like a nice thud like impacts. That's cool. Uh, then we've got uh, kits, which I talked about briefly earlier. So you get a couple of kits here. So if I just, uh, destructive mayhem sounds good. So you can. Yeah, 
so you get that kind of uh, you know so you could build your own rhythms you know to help uh, accent certain parts of loops that you may want to and then there's the big loop section which has got action electronic distortion hat like hip hop melodic organic you heard uh, some from the action electronic in the track so let's take a listen and the hat so let's take a listen to hip hop by the way when this keeps popping up saying that it's missing samples yours won't do that it's only because i'm using uh the be the beta you know the uh the pre-release stuff so that and i probably set it up incorrectly which w i wouldn't put past me so this is your loops you know so you can uh As you can see, they've got a nice way you can, you know, randomize the volume and pan, should you be so inclined, you know. Which is awesome stuff. You'll have to ignore the dog barking in the background. It's probably hungry. Either that or I'm blowing its mind with my epicness. It's probably the former, to be honest, but, you know. So here we've got some melodic... Uh, melodic loops. Let's go there, shall we? Let's do this. Bit of pan. Let's try the pitch on the and see what happens there. <laughs> it's definitely different. Robocop, I'm liking the sound of this. Uh, what have I done? Here we go. So that's your uh, loop section. And then, let's just back out of here. Melodic section. Uh, this, this is like, um, You know, this is now. This library doesn't have as much um, melodic instrumentation as, say, cinematic guitars does, but I think that's kind of understandable because I think most of the source audio is actually coming from uh, drums. So, you know, you wouldn't expect a lot of uh, melody to be coming from the drums. few things you can throw in there and of course these can all be uh, you know arpeggiated which is cool so a uh, bit of arpeggios in there all right so you got melodic uh, transitions this is where you get your uh, you know your, your, your big reversing type sounds So these are sounds, you know, that will reverse. And you get some scrapes. Nice bit of bass in there too. And then, so that's, that's the morphed section. And then this is what I, I wanted to talk about a bit more was the uh, traditional section. So, like I said, most of these sounds are based on um, a marching band. I think it's the Blue Devils. I may have made that up, but uh, yeah. So you get um, you get three different parts. You get ensemble, individual, and rhythm. So if we go on the ensemble and then click on the full. You get uh, the hits. You get rolls. And you get full battery. So I'm going to click on the full battery. Let me just load this up. So this now turns into um, a marching band uh, library. Let's scroll down to where it actually is. Click so we know what keys we can use. Notice there's a bit of round robin going on here. Rolls 
and the good stuff. If I just load up the, uh, the hit collection. Again, you just have to ignore it when it says it's missing samples. They're not missing, they're there. Plenty of, uh, plenty of cool sounds to play with there and in the sections you can have uh, like you know your bass your snares your tenor lines so let's just look at the snare so these are your like uh, traditional marching band type sounds so we've got some sticks got some snare oh no wrong place Some rolls, more sticks. It's cool. And each, uh, as you can see here, you've got close, mid, and far mics, which you can, uh, you know, you can mix as you like. Or the master track. Put an arpeggiator on. And of course you've got uh, your EQ and all this good stuff here. You know, so your high boost, your low boost, which is cool. You've got uh, this little button down here, which loads up the spinner. Excuse me. You see his throw, it kind of throwing the sound around a little bit here. Cool little feature. Uh, and of course, you know, you've got the uh, the puffy stick bass line. So if you wanted to write some uh, traditional um, marching band stuff, it's actually split out for you, which is uh, kind of cool. And then you've got the individual section, which is uh, each of the individual instruments split into, uh, you know, their own different sections. So, I mean, if you wanted a snare played by brushes... Sound is there and it's ready to go you know so let's move back so you've got uh, wood sticks I oh I use the symbol like I say uh, for a few things in this track you've got the and then you got your hi hat a ride symbol and again these have all got the same uh, you know the same controls moving back and then we finally got the uh, the rhythms so you uh, these are quite extensive uh, so like you've got a uh, 16th accent uh, number three which is a 4-4 loop you just boot this up which is your traditional loops, which is what you would expect. And it's just on the one key. But then of course you can, you know, throw in your effects. Throw in some volume randomization. Throw in a sequence perhaps. You can create all other worldly things, but not that you would want to do that. So just throw it in a, a, a three, four sound. So you've got a nice, nice bunch of uh, loops to play with. Got some paradiddles. Par paradiddles. Again, let me just reiterate again that you won't have to do all this loading of the samples. This is just because uh, I, I think I incorrectly set it up when I got the beta. So. Just cool. move back and 
finally we got the arpeggiated so if we uh, pick up the groove bass drum So as you can see, this is spread out. What this arpeggio is doing, I think, is letting you all turn it between the uh, in between the different uh, kick drums, so you get a little bit of a different sound. Stick with it. I like the sound of this. We load up the arpeggio, you can see. You can see it's played like that, so. And of course, if you wanted to uh, speed this up, you know, of course you can. You could slow it right down. Or you could do something like this, turn it down to two steps so you get a hit. Maybe up to do like an eight beat, so you can go da 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 da. da. You wouldn't do it that fast. You got this humanizer button down here, which makes it nice and just throws in a little bit of uh, human feel to it, which is cool. To no wonder, I like the sound of this. <laughs> the randomizer is it seems to be loving these shorter notes today. Yeah. So as you can see there's uh the the tra uh, the traditional section, the marching band section is actually quite um quite in depth. Let's just load up a few more of these. I'm I'm actually going to say after each one, you don't have to do this loading when you get it. This is just a specifically me issue because I'm a bit of an idiot. So something I didn't mention is that with the hits, you can still, um, you know, with the uh, individual hits, you can still apply, uh, you know, that distortion. you can still apply you know things like that. Still put steps in pieces. you can still treat it as though it was a loop or a, a rhythmic thing just cool. and of course you can filter it down and of course you can filter these and then you can drag the steps down Filter on, filter off. All sorts. So as you can see, I mean, if you if you ever saw my uh, cinematic guitars video, which I do recommend you watch, you know, so you can get a maybe perhaps a more in depth look at each individual um, sound design, uh, each uh, different effects panel, and you know what everything does. That uh, you know, and it, it very much applies. It's within the same grasp, which I actually like. I love having. Um, controls out on the front panel you know i like being able to uh tweak things and make them a bit more you know a bit more in individual i got that word from there make it a bit more unique or individual so yeah there's uh yeah so there's plenty of um plenty of things you can do and like i say all the controls are awesome the sounds are awesome what more could you want i mean it's a cracking library so yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this uh little cue i've written and you know uh, my little brief I think this is a bit briefer I, I'm not sure how long I've been talking for but I think this is a bit briefer than normal but um, 
my brief overview of what the library contains and what it's all about. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. I uh, hope you found it a little bit useful. And uh, I hope I see you guys in the next video. Cheers for watching.